All systems are still go on board America's first space shuttle, Columbia, now circling the Earth 172 miles up. The astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen were woken this morning to the strains of a country and western song. After eight hours strapped in their seats, all they had to say was that things had got a little chilly. The shuttle commander John Young, a veteran of four previous space trips, said they'd got ready to break out the long undies. Before going to sleep last night, they had a few words for everybody down on the ground. We've uh, done uh, every uh, test that we're supposed to do, and we're up on the tie line, and the vehicle has just been performing, uh, performing beautifully, much better than anyone ever expected uh, to do on a first flight, and uh, no systems are out of shape. Uh, just an example, uh, we did uh, three uh, Star Tracker alignments in uh, less time than it takes to do one Star Tracker alignment collision simulator. Uh, all the RCS jets have been fired, and the vehicle is just performing like a champ. It's really beautiful. And uh, it's delightful up here at Zero Gravity, my dad. Okay, we're switching over to uh, to the aft camera here. Now we're showing the aft deck. Uh, How does that picture look to you? Coming in real good. Okay, Hank. Yeah, I'd like to echo John's words that I usually do. I guess uh, being the so-called rookie on this flight, I had a, a thrill from from the moment of liftoff all the way up to what we're doing now. It has really been super. The spacecraft has worked as advertised all the way along. A uh, few little minor new problems, but uh, nothing of significance. I guess the major one you guys are working on down there is uh, dealing with some of our instrumentation. Uh, but uh, I think we've got something that's really going to mean something to the country and the world. This vehicle is uh, performing like a champ, like all of us that have worked so long on them knew, knew that you would. The only thing to mar the near-perfect maiden flight of Columbia has been the loss of several tiles in the craft's heat shield. They were blown off the tail section as Columbia blasted off the launch pad. Mission Control say they're not a serious problem, but they've been scanning the belly of the shuttle with long-range cameras just in case any more have come off. It's there that the tiles are critical to prevent the shuttle burning up in the searing heat of re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. The astronauts will be going through a whole series of tests today, including several re-entry procedures. Well, with me now is a man who must know what's going through their minds right now, Dave Scott, a veteran of many space missions culminating in a ride in the moon uh, as commander of Apollo 15. Dave, what would you be thinking about now? The prospect of further problems marring the whole thing? No, not really, Peter. I'd be thinking about the re-entry. That's the next major event, and I think uh, as they prepare themselves for the re-entry tomorrow, uh, they pretty much concentrate on that because they really don't have major problems now. How much do they control the re-entry? Well, they control the manner in which it's set up, but actually the spacecraft will fly in automatically until John Young gets to about 50,000 feet over the landing spot in California, and then he will take over and physically fly it manually to the touchdown. When you landed on the moon, did the computers land it, or did you land it manually? No, we landed it manually, but uh, the computers gave us the right guidance information in order to get close to the landing point, and then uh, as we approached the ground, we actually took over and physically controlled the vehicle to a touchdown. We can see some pictures which were recorded earlier. Now, that's, that's John Young, isn't it? Yes, that's John. Uh, now, does it make a great difference psychologically to have so much more room to move around in? Because the earlier craft, the Apollo craft, were terribly cramped, weren't they? Yes, and I think it's uh, very good that they have that room to move around and uh, the various facilities on board. This is really a, a step into the future on a real livable spacecraft. The central heating doesn't seem to be all that good, by all accounts. Well, I think we find in most spacecraft on a first flight, they're either a bit warm or a bit cold because of the uncertainties of the thermal environment. And that's one reason they're flying this, is to get a, an understanding of the effects of the sun and the cold side of the earth and the darkness on the thermal environment. Do, well, in, in these circumstances where one astronaut's done it before and the other's a new guy, does the chap who's done it before have a real advantage? I mean, is he, um, is he better psyched up to, to handle the emergency, to put it that way? I think in general, yes. I think once you've been up there, you do get some background experience and a feel for what's going on. The, uh, the mystery is taken out of the game, if you will. But on the other hand, the people who go the first time are normally seasoned test pilots, especially in Bob Crippen's case. And uh, I think they're cool and calm, and they understand what's going to happen as well. Can we talk again about the descent? What fascinates me is that on the liftoff, they have the capability to eject. 
to get out should uh, things go wrong, at, up to mm -hmm. a certain height. On the descent, um, can they eject if the descent looks like going badly? Yes, that's true. Only after a certain height again. Uh, at the 120,000 foot level, uh, above that you can't really eject su successfully, but below that you can. So if things don't go right and they are far, far off their mark, they will be able to eject. But uh, we expect to have good energy management, and uh, if the vehicle's anywhere near the dry lake bed in California, I'm sure John Young will find the runway. How much of this, though, is, is really in, in the lap of the gods? For instance, what if there were a, t a terrible freak electrical storm which knocked the shuttle off course? Would, would the computers or would indeed the, the, the men themselves be able to cope with those sort of circumstances? Oh, yes. I think uh, as we develop the systems, uh, they're developed with all the thoughts in mind of environmental conditions, uh, electrical storms and those sorts of things. But, of course, on these early flights, uh, the ship will be landed in a clear sunshine, and that's why uh, the dry lake bed in California has been selected, because the weather is so good and the visibility is so good, and there are really no environmental hazards to the landing. But what if, if it looked like overshooting, say, heading for a, a hill? Would they be able to get out at that stage? Oh, yes, they would. But again, uh, with a five-mile runway and clear skies, and with John Young and Bob Crippen both being as proficient as they are, uh, I would bet 100% that they're going to find the landing spot. They, they just, at that stage of your professional career as a pilot, you just don't overshoot the runway. It's looking good. And, of course, you'll be here tomorrow evening yes. at 7 o'clock when on ITV you can see the return live as it happens. We'll have a special program then. Dave Scott, thanks for joining us now. You're welcome, Peter.